I would like to ask you about the video. Uh, first thing you can say no. Second thing I didn't make it. And third, I will not be offended if you say. Okay, so yeah, I pursued social entrepreneurship and I am pursuing social entrepreneurship. And interestingly, you know, like when I was doing that, I am not even aware like I am doing this. Until someone came to me and told me, first time you are doing social entrepreneurship. I was like, hell yeah, I am doing it. I cited your thought, that's what I really want. The big terms like social entrepreneurship, big bank, stranger things. Yeah. So, before I move on with these like motivating thoughts, like facts, figures, everything, I'll just like to tell you a story. Yeah. But it's not sad. So, like, yeah. So, the thing is, uh, August 2014, the month when I started my bachelor's. So I landed into the Management Management College of Sri Mata Vaishnava Devi University. The name is and it's in German Kashmir. So the college is like beautiful. And if, when I landed in that college, I just promised myself that I'm going to study in each and every semester. I'm going to participate in each and all events. And I'm going to land in the job. I'm going to let you guess what I'll be through. Nothing. Just like the New Year resolutions, nothing. And that's why dad sitting in the not even asking. I was not pleased. Seriously. So, fast back, it was June 2015, I was in second year of my undergrad studies. So, I really thought that I should do something like work from home internships and everything. And I should have uh, gained my economic conditions and my monthly spending. Now, what happened is like I started applying, I was rejected from in like 42 companies, called an interview with two, and accepted in one. So this company was Agra. And I'm not going to tell you the name, not because it's confidential, but the name is very stupid. Okay? So if you take a take, take a word of hello, then what this company did is like they put three words at the end of the name, so it will be hello. But I'm not going to tell the name of so what happened is like the internship was for a period of three months and I was promised a stipend of nearly like two thousand per month. So it would be a uh, 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 like six thousand for a period of six for a period of three months. Yeah. Now the thing is, yeah, I worked for them for the one month and I was a pretty little mind, I was being a change the company, and I'm going to do amazing things. I used to work uh, approximately like seven hours a day, yeah, for the company and exclude even the weekends. I was working for them in a way. Now what happened is like I worked for a month and at the end of the month I went to them and I just asked them so that was Saturday. I told them next month you will come back. Okay, we will just be motivated to keep doing the great work again and the second month, I did the second month, I just followed the same schedule and I went to them and asked for my next Saturday. So like they like, next month. And I was like, I will not continue for them but please guess what happened at the end of third month. I got the match. My father's name is still very funny. <laughs> yeah. So what happened is like, I didn't stop, really. I didn't stop. Like, I thought maybe this was not the nice thing for my phone, but I thought it And what happened is like, I started applying to institutions to university, and actually in a period of one year, I was accepted to the American University in Cairo as a web developer in Dallas again, and I was not there. Guys, I was roaming around places with a proxy pay and everything. As I told, it's not sad. And the day I graduated, I just thought, uh, was I lucky or did I work hard? Or maybe both at the same time. But how much percentage of the graduating the graduates per year get this opportunity? That you give an alternative fact, 94% of the engineers who graduate each and every year are not even employable. And you can take a percent of how much of them get such opportunities. So you come in the most serious institutions. And that made me thought that I should do something for the youth, something to give the answer number of opportunities and access to opportunities. And then they came up with an organized called Code Bank Initiative. Remember it, binary code is the word Code Bank. Yeah. So the thing is, why I chose social entrepreneurship? Because I really believe each one of us sitting here and in this country as one step approach should have an equal access to opportunities and ample number of opportunities. I also do believe we must have an equal access and equal love baby. Now the thing is it has been 17 months since I have been in social entrepreneurship and lots of questions were asked. You know like people they just 
gave you magic return. Now, the most prominent question was, how do you generally maintain the financial stability when you're doing social entrepreneurship? So, if you guys seen the video, then there was this portion where they, where they say that Apple is not taking profits, they just invested really. Okay. So, the thing is, how does one get the financial return? So, this is a pre interesting notion, or I should say, a book that much famous and MBA college wants to get into them. So, yeah, the book is. It generally takes the thing that you don't need money and you're not able to like make profits for yourself. But the thing is, in certain entrepreneurship, the revenue models and the revenue streams are diversified. You can go for products, you can go for services, you can go for renting, leasing, education, training, and whatnot. Therefore, you will be able to raise a substantial level of income. You know? That's the that, that most prominent advantage of doing social entrepreneurship. Yeah? Now, the thing is, does social entrepreneurship serve the interest of all? Like, I am a social entrepreneur, I work for my company, I work for the people, but what about you guys who are not associated with my company or who are not associated with any sort of social entrepreneur project? Let me tell you, the thing is when the social enterprise is born, we look for the right people, the like minded people, who just aim, whose passion is to work for the wellness and the good of society. And the society is the place where people like me, you and the other people. It is indirectly contributing to the wellness of the society and indirectly contributing to the interest of all. Right? Now, thing is, it's a very tricky question. So, the one guy asked me, like, can opportunity really grow in negativity? Why negativity? India is a third world country. We have different sectors which are underdeveloped. It's like people are living the living conditions are benefiting. And if a successful businessman would go there, he would see that he has to invest a lot in that sector and the returns could be minimal. And hence that question would generally back off. Like I am not going to invest in that. This is where Shoshan now stop. We bring the most revolutionary business models in the aim to just improve the living status of the people who are living in that Center, living in that place, living in that world of their own, which is not like third world, but that building world. That is actually, yeah, the opportunity can really grow in negativity. Just have to see the potential opportunity which can be generated in the area. Now, yes, the other question was a man walked with me and told his son, What about it? You can watch the family. You have a mother, you have a father. My next siblings may have a wife and children, something if I just go and do this social work, what about it? The thing is, I will say, I agree. The duty is towards your family and the duty is towards your society to make this expensive. You cannot get it for the idea of that. It's just a matter that you have to balance both of them. And if you are like giving a priority to one of the duties, then my friends, you are just neglecting a big portion of the life because each and every portion has this kind of society. This is little things that we can adopt in your life and make a change. Not someone else that will for the sake in your life. And it does seventeen months actually I am a changed person. The way I look at things, the way I feel things is different. Now thing is today I have to visit a lot of colleges. I went a lot of programs. Now, the thing is, I do motivate the students to take up social entrepreneurship. Like, students like you, me, all of this country. And how do I do that? The thing is, students like us, we have a natural tendency to take risks. And a typical business statement which you will learn is like, if you are taking more risks, then you will expect better returns. And it's a proven mathematical proven fact. We youngsters have a rush of blood, confidence, determination. We can just go against the established business status and we can challenge them and we can bring the most revolutionary idea today itself. We can just adopt, we can just create innovative things, we can bring a revolution. So I'm going to give you two examples. The first is Pius Bush. He is a 22 year old, a former Sashoka, I know Sashoka better. And also, he was the founder of the Optimist series. 
Right at the point of lipstick. Optimistic is the only positive state You are not going to find news of crime, health, robbery, as it attacks, anything. Only positive. Second, Arushi Batra. She is the co founder of the Dr. Farm Army. Now, think it has a name for this. What this guy is doing, this group of people, they serve food and it is a building and shelter to the country that should. And my dear friends, these are all examples, there are more examples. They all started very much this stage of their life. The time to be right. Think is, at the end, if someone is looking to work in that sector, someone could be interested in what's the future of this, like what's the future of engineering, what's the future of machine learning. Think that what's the future of social and option. The thing is, if you go back to research and like pull out data of a particular decade, this decade, you will see there has been a surge and there has been like a huge increase in the number of CSR activities, platforms like Infosys, DCS, IBM. They are fulfilling their social responsibilities. There have been a number of established social enterprises. Not only the patriarchal part of the society, but also women are coming to start taking part in space and entrepreneurship. And that must be the future of social entrepreneurship. In coming time, the social technology will be open in every fabric of the society and it could provide you a lens to research in most particular depth of sectors or maybe in depth of sectors also. In which people see they we are chilling, but no. There are potential opportunities that we can find. Social entrepreneurship is driven by love, compassion, gentleness, kindness. And hence it motivates and It gives you a last satisfaction. It helps you to find your life's purpose. And it helps you to help others. The thing is, I would request you like to my humble hands. Be kind, be gentle, extend your hands and help others who have come to you and you know, for them. Put the science and consideration of class, trade, religion, community, nationalism, anything. Because if you are considering them, you are diminishing the value of the human race of which you are a part. We are a part. And at the end, I would like to end with a quote by Martin Luther King. Everybody of us can be great because anybody of us can serve. We don't have to have a college degree to serve. We don't have to have our subject and perfect degree to serve. Just need a heart full of grace and a soul limited wealth.